I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, the, we we up to chapter two. We've been in chapter one for how long? Two, three weeks. You all right? Two, three weeks. So we, we move on to chapter two now. Is that all right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, therefore, we went into chapter one. We finished chapter one talking about how God handed people to a reprobate mind because they had the, the truth of the word and they didn't want to do it. And they taught other people how to do the same thing. And and we look at, you know, the works of the flesh and, you know, and all of these other things that, that you know, they're going to get um, because of what they didn't do and keep the word. There's a wrath that is to come. Well, sometimes we need to understand that God keeps showing you his kindness and his glory, but he's not going to continue with it after a while. He's not going to allow you to continue in your craziness and thinking God is good, but you ain't willing to change. You're not willing to, to change from your ways and do everything. But, you know, the funny thing about the epistles is something very powerful because, you know, we're going to go through as much of the epistles that we can because, you know, Paul was writing into the book of Romans and trying to teach certain things. And you can't teach people how to live without telling them what not to do and telling them what to do. So we find out that on verse 32 in verse chapter um, in chapter 1, it says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in that doing. You find out those people, they know that there's a wrath, but they don't care. There's some people who don't care. They don't care about, you know, the way people think is, you know what, it don't matter about hell. I'm not going to it now. I might as well enjoy my life now as it is and do what I want to do. But there's always a recompense of everything that you do in this life. Amen. We, don't, we only live our life as us for today, but not understanding there's a future that God has for us that we're going to have to look at a, a holy God and give an accounting of why we do what we do in the body. Can somebody say amen? amen? So now we start chapter 2 with this, right? It says, therefore, thou art an excusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For when thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges does the same thing. Amen. For thou that judges does the same thing. Well, we find out that at this point, that Paul was talking to the Pharisees, to the priests, because a lot of times religion was just for show. You know, people just do it and, you know, you come to church on Sundays and, you know, you got the big robes on, you do all those things, but you don't really do, you know, for yourself. You tell other people what to do, but they won't do it your own self. Well, that's what the Pharisees, so Paul, you have to understand who is Paul talking to and I believe Paul was talking to the Pharisees, but in the same thing, we could look at it that Paul is talking to the pastors of these days, the bishop, the apostles, and we also, as churchgoers of these days, he said that we telling other people not to do something, but guess what? We doing it our own self, right? So I explained to you that Paul here was addressing the Jewish leaders without naming them, right? He, he began to describe them by their well-knowing um, disposition to justify themselves and condemn others. <laughs> that it's okay to, for you to do it, but it's not okay for somebody else to do it. Sometimes you can justify why you do your wrong. You can justify certain things in your life. Amen. So just because, so now we can say that Paul was talking to the leaders of the church. That we can begin to tell you not to do certain things and we also, as leaders, begin to do it ourselves. We tell you don't do it, but we do it. Don't smoke, but we but we smoke it. Don't drink, but we drunk, you know, we drink it. Don't lie, but we lie. Don't do this, and guess what happened? You doing it. Now look at this right. Um read Luke Natalia um, 18, 19 for me, please. 
Luke chapter 18, verse 19. Eighteen, Luke eighteen, verse nineteen. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. You see that, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Why are you call me good? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because you have to understand that Jesus was trying to tell them something here. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees was calling them good. Maybe, maybe they were trying to flatter whatever it is they're trying to do, but maybe they see themselves as being good. Sometimes you can, the greatest deception is deception to your own life and where you at in God and what you're doing in God. You got to be sober to find out when is it when you're walking um, in the trueness of growing in God and becoming the person that God wants you to do. Somewhere along the line, you may even deceive yourself to think you're okay. You can deceive yourself to think that, you know what, I'm all right, I'm perfect. And, and you know the funny thing is? You begin to advise other people about your same condition. You tell them, well, don't lie, but you'll lie yourself. If I was you, I'd do this. But guess what? You're in the same situation as other people. Same thing that you're doing. But a lot of times we will advise themselves. You know, you advise them. And sometimes you don't even tell them you struggle with the same thing. But you tell them as if you're greater than them. And they're not going through something. And you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't doing it, but you tell them to do it. Right. Oh, the same people that walk in unforgiveness is the first people that's going to tell you to love. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's all right. It's all right tonight, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. But for the same people, you find out when you look around, you say, you know, what's going on with you? You're going to find out that they're not walking in love. They're not walking in the fullness, but it's easy for you to tell somebody to do something when you're not doing it your own self. It's really for you to tell somebody, humble yourself, but you're prideful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easy <coughs> for us to counsel people, to tell people all kind of stuff, tell them good stories, and tell them all kind of things. But guess what happened? In your own heart, you're not doing the very thing your own self. You are what? Inexcusable. Right? For thou that judges do is what? The same things. The same things. You telling people who not saved to seek the Lord, you ain't seeking them, you say. <laughs> you telling people, oh, well, you know you gotta love them, you gotta do this, and, and you ain't doing it your own self. Huh? Because guess what? Now it has become a show. It has become something. It has because there's, there's a point where you are living more in the outside instead of the internal. Mm -hmm. Can you check yourself in your heart with God? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you really be transformed now? Mm -hmm. huh? We're not allowing God to transform our heart. So we, we, you can, believe me, subconsciously hold back the truth about you. Hold back what it is about you that need to be changed, that you need to hand over to God and say, God, can I tell you something? It's not just saying, God, I admit it. To tell God, yeah, God, I'm prideful. But you leave it at just you admitting, but not willing to make a change. It's not just good enough to admit something. It's as if, if you admit you're prideful, and you're not doing anything about it, it's as if saying that I choose to stay prideful. Mm -hmm. Choose to stay hateful. I choose to stay in unforgiveness. But what God is asking us is that to the point there would be no difference between us and these Pharisees. That we're telling other people they're good. You counsel other people how to be good husband, how to be good wife, and you don't do the same thing. You don't be a good friend. You don't be a good, come on, you, because guess what that is called? A hypocrite. A hypocrite. It's a smack in the face of God for us to totally come in and tell other people something that you are not willing to do your own self. Mm. We got to be very, this is what you call now growth. We got to grow up now. It's not just enough to say, oh, God sees about me. God understands. No, he don't. 
not when he died for you so you can change. When if a God died, if God died for you so you can change, we can't go to human thinking and say, God understand, I'm better than what I used to be. No. No, no. You're still saying he don't have all the power. Oh yeah, yeah, we're in work of process. We all in work of process. We all, God is working all of us in process, but how long are you going to stay in the same state that you are in? How many more years or months or weeks is going to pass in before you tell God, have your way in my life? And guess what? God is not going to have his way until you totally let him in. Until you totally put yourself in the altar and become a living sacrifice. Matter of fact, be a dead sacrifice and stay there. Because the thing about living sacrifice, they tend to crawl away after a while. When they see the fire. <laughs> now, when they begin to see the fire, when God really called for change. Huh? When God really called to purify you. When God really called to put the pressure on you. To really bring a change. Sacrifices have a way of crawling out and changing their minds. Hmm. And guess what? There ain't going to be no fire like in the altar in the old days. That fire may be trials. Mm -hmm. That God is using to purge you in a situation that comes up to see if you're going to act the same old way you used to act. Mm -hmm. And every time you keep failing the test over and over and over again. And you can never pass first grade. You've you, you close to 50 years old, close to 100, close to 30, close to 20, you're still in kindergarten with a dunce hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it to be funny, but the truth is that you look very silly now. Mm -hmm. Hmm? You look very silly because we won't be able to pass the test because guess what? Because every time we look at ourselves, we judge other people, but we never judge our own self. Amen. We say what other people need to change, but guess what? We never choose to change ourselves. Right. And look what it says, verse 2. But we, we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. See, but we are sure. Commit what? When you read number 1 to 29, it talks about people who hear the word and they know the truth, but they don't do nothing about it. And don't think reprobate mind is just people, you want to call them homosexuals and liars and thieves and everything who get the word and because they don't do it. There are certain people who in church who come to church every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday, and you still in reprobate mind. Don't look at reprobate minds as people outside in the world who knows the truth and don't want to go through it. But there's some people in the church, there's some people who sitting right now who knows the truth, but get what? What? Refuse to live the truth of what God says. And that means that you also may be on your way to become a reprobate mind. And he said, just such as these people, the judgment of God is real. Oh, and easy. It's not easy, but it's the truth. You may sit here. And saying, I'm okay. I'm okay. But right there, you can be in a reprobate mind. And what is a reprobate mind? A mind that God leaves you alone to your own thinking. Where God says, I ain't going to mess with you. I'm going to let you do what you want to do in your own strength and your own power. You think you know. You think you greater. Go on with your bad self now. I leave you alone to your mind. I leave you alone to your own self, to your own ways, to your own ways of being. Oh yeah, I leave you alone to you. How long am I going to keep telling you the same thing, keep stretching out to you, and you keep refusing me? Because a lot of us look at the grace of God as a point where you continue to sin and continue in your ways and refusing to change. And guess what? Just because something don't happen to you now, you will pay for it one time down the road. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. We, these are supposed to be the shouting messages. But nobody going to shout at this. Nobody going to get up. Ah, glory, hallelujah. Because what we're really talking about right now is transformation. 
What we're really talking about now is what I'm doing. I'm scraping your inner man. I'm scraping the mess out of you. I'm scraping the things out of your conscience and your mind so you can become the man and woman of God that God truly wants you to be. No surgery feels good when it's being done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God don't want to even give you everything for you to feel it. Some of us don't learn unless we feel it. Some of us don't learn until something drastic happened to wake you up and say, you know what? There got to be a change. There got to be something that happened that knocked you in the head and say, if you don't change, this is what you're about to lose. This is, this is what's going to come. And guess what? Instead of you changing, guess what you call it? The devil. And you begin to intercede and call God the devil. But when it's God allowing you to get knocked in the head so you can wake up with yourself and say, this is, this is the day in the wilderness. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of rebellion. Harden not your heart as in the day of rebellion. Some of us, our heart is so hard because we have kept in that rebellious ways for so long. We don't know no other way to be but rebellious. Mm -hmm. So guess what? It's hard. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes in. Mm -hmm. yep. I ain't going to change. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody tells me. Mm -hmm. And that's some of us spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it said. I don't care who tells me. I don't care who come. I will not change. Mm -hmm. And that is called rebellion. Mm -hmm. You can call it prideful, but God called it what? Mm -hmm. Rebellion. And guess what he says? Guess what he says in verse 2? But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Right? We sure which commit such things. And when you look at 32, because what? You go back to 32. He said, who knowing the word of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure. There's something you know you're going to put a bullet in your foot knowing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Why would you put a bullet in your foot knowing what could, you know the danger, you, you can catch an artery, you, you, you can bleed to death, but you still say, I'm going to shoot myself on the foot. Mm -hmm. And you know what's going to happen, but you do it anyway. That's what happens when you go against God's word. You shoot yourself in the foot knowing this, the pain that's involved in it. Knowing the hurt that's involved in it. And you know what I call it? Sadistic. Sadistic, where you put yourself in pain where you don't have to put yourself in pain. You choose to do it because that's all you ever know. You're sadistic in your thinking. That's a form of reprobate thinking. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to tell you, it's not just all these people that was named in Romans chapter 1. There are some people in the church right now who pastor it, who's, who come in the church, but you are in a break of madness and reprobate against God where you can't even see where you're going wrong. You can't even see to see enough to change. Anytime you know something and you know the consequences of it and not willing to change, something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you know the consequences, you know what happens. You know what's, what will be done. But you say to yourself, I'm not going to change. I don't care. So we know that those who do such things, the wrath of God and the judgment of God is coming from yes. the people. Look at this here. And thinkest thou this, O man, O woman, that just as them would do such things and do us the same, thou shalt escape the judgment of God. And that was one of the scriptures I was very scared of. See, those are the scriptures when I begin to hear it, I say, God, there's certain things I don't want to do. Because I don't know if I can preach and, and do all kind of things I'm doing and be my heart be right before you. Hmm? And nobody perfect. You know, I miss it. Huh? I miss it. I don't get it right all the time. But there's certain things about, you know, when you don't get it right and you're willing to admit and say, God, I want to make a change. There's a difference. 
But it's talking about now, thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them, right? Which do such things and do the same that shall escape the judgment of God. He said, you're judging other people and what they're doing and the way they need to do it, but you ain't doing the talk, you know, the same thing. You're telling people how to work out their lives. You need to tell them what to do this, but you ain't doing the thing for you too. It's funny. How you going to tell me to put my life together? Your life is a mess. How you going to tell me to love and do this and do that and you and, and you messed up in your own self? How you going to tell me that? Huh? First of all, why don't you be an example of what I need to do? Be the example so I can see. See, nobody in the season don't want to be models. Huh? They don't want to be no models. The greatest thing that can speak is a model. When you see now spring, you go to the malls. The models speak without saying something. They say spring is near and the fashion has come. A lot of people want to talk, but they don't want to be, be like me. It used to be an old song um, we used to have and say, I want to be like Mike. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to be like Mike. Mm -hmm. But you're telling people to be like you, but you don't want to pay the price to be you. You don't want to pay the price to be you. You just want the look without the pain. You want the look of what things are, even if it's leadership, even if it's whatever. You want the look. You want the glamour. But you don't want to be the model of saying, I'm not judging, but be like me because I paid the price. Because guess what? When you are the model, you don't have to speak. People, your life will speak for itself on who you belong to and who you are. A lot of people want power because you trip on power, but you understand there's a pain and there's a cost that comes with power. Then, let me tell you something. When you, when you are the top dog, you are the target. Yes, sure when you want to come to leadership, you want to do whatever, <coughs> be careful about all the demons that's going to come at you. With bodies, without bodies, yes. problems in your life, problems in marriage, problems in your kids, problems, all kinds of things that's going to come. Or don't even think about, you see, you are the glory, but you don't know the story behind it. You want the glory, but you don't know what you got to do to get to that point. That's why for many years, I'd rather sit in the back. Amen. I don't know who, who wants to go in and, and, and be a volunteer in a Mexican gun show. Where you go, they blindfold you and put a cigarette in your mouth. And, and, and you blind, you don't know where you're coming from. So you yeah, want to come and pick, become part of the Mexican death squad and shut you down, boy. It's not easy. Because God is requiring you to be a model. Not just we wear the robes, not just you wear the titles, not just you wear the stuff. God wants more. He wants you to adorn yourself in the inner man. In your inner life, to be an example, not just telling people what to do, or you do this, you do that, look at me, bow down to me, because I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. But no, 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 no. God is looking for you. There's a judgment that's going to come upon you when you tell other people how to live and tell them how what to do, and you don't do it yourself. Don't think the same people say you're going to be judged, that you won't be judged too. Mm -hmm. I, I was scared, still scared when I read that. Mm -hmm. Because I find out that I can fool people. But I can fool God. At the end of the day, God going to see my life. I don't care what you do. He sees it. That's why we say, God, help us. Purify us. Get our life together, God. We want to change. Let me be convicted of my wrongs. Matter of fact, it keeps you from doing wrong. When you understand that there's a God that's watching me. That it doesn't matter what other people, you, come, you, you can come to church and you look all nice and people see you. You got a nice smile, but they don't know what you're living for real. Amen. They don't know what you did last night. They don't know. We all can master it ourselves in the praise. We all can master it ourselves in the worship. But only God can test the hearts. 
Only God can know the heart. Only God can purify the heart. Only God can see in the inner heart. And that's the problem with the church. You can do what you want to do. But God has got to be the one that judges our hearts and purifies our hearts. And say, God, I see most of y'all want to live right before men, but not before God. You see, you live before the people by the look that you have, by the praise that you have, by the worship that you have. But God said you're still dirty because you still didn't give it up in your heart. Mm -hmm. Got to purify your heart before me. You got to get your heart right before me. Got to get that heart and get it purified. If there's pride, if there's all anger, if there's all the stuff in it, God take it out of us. Because what is the point of us having houses, cars, we're looking for the blessing, but we're dirty inside. We messed up inside. We unhappy inside. We unhappy with our own selves. Prideful in our ways. I don't want to see me in this season. Whatever I got to let go, whatever I have to do, I want God. And I'm just saying to you, in this message, if it's burning, it's burning me too. Because I'm not preaching as one that judges. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching as one also who's in the same spot that you are in. So you ain't going to tell me or, 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 or keep... The, 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 the letters, let's write them and do this. Oh, oh you know, we got a problem. Look, I, I'm talking about me too. We all need to look at ourselves from the top to bottom because Paul was talking to the leaders, the Pharisees, talking to all of us. I've judged some people. You judge. You told them certain things. I told them certain things. But when we tell them certain things, do you do it? Oh, be humble. You ain't humble. <laughs> Don't do this. You do it. Get yourself right first. The Bible says this, first take the beam out of your own eyes so you can do what? See clearly. A lot of times you ain't seeing clearly because you got too many things in your own eyes. Amen. Take the contacts off so you can see. So you can see clearly. Take the glasses off so you can see clearly. Sometimes glasses give you a vision that, but I'm talking about the inner vision. The inner vision of your spirit. The inner vision to understand that, you know, when we talk about it, to understand we're all wrong. We've all done something wrong. That's what the enemy will try to do is make you concentrate on other people but not looking at you. And that's what the Pharisees was doing. They didn't look at themselves because guess what? There can be, you think you arrived. But you didn't make it yet, baby. You didn't make it yet. I didn't make it yet. Live long enough, you didn't make it yet. Don't act like you arrived. Don't act like you made it to the top so you can look at everybody else and tell them, you know what, they're not doing and judge them. But there's a way that you can point out certain things to people and say, this is the way we ought to live. But I'm not coming as one that judges. I'm preaching as one and teaching as one who have need of the same thing as you do. Ah, there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference of preaching, uh, judging you not making it. I ain't saying I'm making it. I'm not saying none of that. I'm, I'm working it out just like you working it out. I'm trying to let God do the same thing in me that I'm asking him to do in you. Preaching about me. Amen. Need God to do the works in me. Because guess what? After the end of the day, I don't want to preach to you and be a castaway. I don't want to preach to you. You make it in and I don't. I want to make it in too. Oh, I want to see Jesus just like you want to see Jesus. And if I don't do his will, the same thing reprobate can happen to me. But I, you have to choose to live the life that God wants you to live apart from what people think. But say, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm going to listen to your voice. When the Lord whispered to me this week, he said, what is truth? And I said, what? He said, what is truth? Because he began to talk to me, there's many truths that we're trying to call truth. It's not true. I don't care if people tell you what they think. It's not true. If it's not, can I tell you something? If it doesn't come from the word of God, it's a lie. 
If you give me your opinion and what you think is a lie, it's not what? The truth. If you're telling me your experiences, it's good that you can tell me your experiences, but tell me what does Jesus say? What does the Bible say? What does he want me to live? Which way he wants me to live? What does he want me to do? So look at this. All despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. A lot of times, because God didn't judge you, you think God was all right with it. Sometimes when the lightning don't strike, you know when you do something wrong and the lightning don't strike, there's, there's a peace now for you to keep going in the wrong direction. There's something, because you know it's wrong, but because something didn't happen to you the first time you did it, you think you're going to go and do it with your bad right. self and continue in it. That's right. But not understanding the reason that God didn't do anything to you because he was long-suffering. Right. He's merciful God. Right. He's a glorious That's God. Right. He's a good God. Why, does God. why doesn't God destroy the world? Because he's long-suffering, saying that maybe they're going to get saved. That's maybe right. they're going to get That's it. Right. Our God is a good God. Glory. That's right. He's a good and merciful That's God. Right. Because guess what? If God wanted to get me, he would have gotten me. Yeah. And I thank God that he didn't get me when we could have gotten me. Because of his mercy. The Bible says because of his mercy, we're not destroyed. Because of his goodness. What is his goodness? His favor. What is his mercy? His favor. Tell somebody it's because of favor that he didn't get you. Why? Come on, God. While you were cursing God, he could have wiped you out, yep. but he didn't do it. While you say with your bad self, yep. there's no God, it's because he brought God, he's merciful. Yep. While you say you don't believe in God, you woke up in the morning again. It's uh -huh. because he's merciful. Mercy. It is, come on now. They see, all the people in the world and the people in the church got to understand the reason that you stand here is uh -huh. because he's a merciful God. That's right. That's right. He's a glorious God. Right. He's a good God. He uh -huh. could have watched us out, but he did not do That's it right. because his purpose is right. he said, God so loved the world oh, God. That, oh, God, that whosoever right. believe, oh come on God, if you believe on his son, That's he right. shall not perish. That's, right. That's why he's willing to hold on and say no. See the thing about it, what God wanted to hurt you, my God, wipe you out. Mercy stood in front of him. Right. Say no, I died for That's them. Right. Even though they just That's talked right. about me. Even though they turned their back on me. Even and hypocrites. They don't care about anything I've done because the Bible said, while you are yet sinners, that Christ died for you. That's why he worshiped and said, I will not God have mercy. Let him live. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Some of y'all, if you hear somebody talk junk about you, you want to wipe them out. But they have talked junk about God for so long. You gonna tell me God is long, my God. He's long suffering, he's merciful, because all these generations and all these eons and years, they talk bad about God. He let the sun come up on them. He let the moon come down. That's right. He fed them. That's he right. cared about them. That's he right. walked you up and they still say there's no God. Oh God have mercy. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm right. God. Because I know some of y'all would agree with me. You're the wipe out some people. Yes, you you move this way, wipe right out this yes, country. Go that way, wipe right out that other yes, country. Yes, but yes. thank God, God is not us. Yes. But God is not merciful in long suffering. That's why nothing happened for us. He ain't trying to get you. He's not trying to wait on you. He wants you to have his my God, the goodness of his mercy, the goodness that he got for you. That's why he's holding on. We're going to talk about it for just a little bit. The, the Greek word. Thinkest thou, verse 3, is logi zome. Reason. Right? Thinkest thou this, O man, that just as them which do such things, do us 
the same that shall escape the judgment of God. Let me give you one scripture to confirm the logizo may think us thou reason in your head. Romans 6, 11. Read that for me, please. Yes. Likewise, reckon ye selves, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, mm. but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You see that, right? You got to look at yourself dead unto sin and alive unto Jesus Christ. Some of us are thinking ourselves alive unto sin and dead to Jesus. <laughs> huh? You got to be dead to sin. Dead to it. Hmm? Dead. Many that when something dead, it don't got no power. It don't exist. It don't got no power. Even though it's dead, it don't got no power over you. It may have power over other people, but because you're in Jesus, it don't have no power over you. And the verse 4 of this passed out the riches, right? The riches of his goodness. He's the riches of his goodness. That's what we're destroy. Because of the riches. God was good to you and not and not destroy you so you can continue but to make a change. You see that, right? The reason he doesn't destroy you is because he wants you to continue so you can make a change. It's all about a change. If you're not making a change in your life, in your thinking, in your inner life, guess what? You're taking that mercy for granted. You're taking that mercy for granted and you are being rebellious. And you say, I know how to live. I've been in church all my life. Well, if you've been in church all your life, then why we don't see no change? There's some people who sit in pews for years and we ain't see no change. Huh? We don't see no difference in their lives. We don't see no nothing in you. You still the same old way. And the whole thing is, we have more of a secret ways to hide our sins. Oh, Amen. We have a secret way to hide our sins. We have more of a secret way to keep doing what we're doing and thinking God don't see. Or pastor won't see. I don't need to see. I'm not going to judge you. God will. God will judge. God, don't worry about me seeing you. Worry about God seeing you. My God. You can get under the drapes. <laughs> oh, nobody going to see me. Come on, baby. <laughs> see, if you didn't read that scripture that said that the darkness is as light to him. Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that his eye, he says his eyes go to and fro and all the earth to see who's. Yeah. So when God is about to bless you, what did he see you doing? And then you come in, Pastor, I'm still waiting for the answer for this to happen. Hold on. While he was seeking through and fro on the earth, what did he see? What did he see you doing while he was seeking through and fro on the earth? Hmm? What did he see you were up to? Arguing in the home, fighting, rebellious. You praising here but cursing out there. Calling your kids all kind of nastiness. Mm -hmm. But when you come here, hallelujah, <laughs> praise Jesus. <laughs> you coming against the mercy of God. You coming against his goodness because not only, see, I don't know why, but what, but what the Holy Spirit put in my heart is this, that it's not being a good model and being a good believer, it's being a good mother and a good father. Some of us think that how you act at home don't matter. You nasty at home, you're un uncaring, you rebellious, you do all kinds of things, but you come to the house of God. Oh God, guess what it is? You're a Pharisee. You're a Pharisee. Because what did the Pharisee do? They were more interested on how they look to people than how they look to God. They were more caring on how people view 
their importance, their their position, their title, huh? than what God is calling them to do and the way God is calling them to behave. And guess what God said? Don't you think my mercy and my goodness why they do certain things to you? It is to do what? So good to lead you into what? Repentance. Why is it certain things don't destroy us? Right? Why do you think I'm going to give you three things that lead to repentance? Because he said that that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Why is it certain things don't destroy us? Three things that lead us to repentance. Number one, His goodness. Hmm? His goodness is Christos, Chestos, Crestos, and Ogato, right? It is the virtue and the benefits of God whereby He leads sinners to repentance. Meaning that, do you know how sometimes you were saying some good things happen to you? Right? And you know you did wrong and some good things still happen to you? And guess why he allows some good things to happen to you? So he can let you know it was him. So you can change. You didn't deserve it. But he still gave you to you anyway. But some of us, you know how we look at it? Oh, well, you know what? I may be doing all right because he's blessing me. He's blessing me, so let me continue on what I'm doing. And not knowing that God was showing uh, um, benefit to you, he was saying goodness to you, so you can let you know. You know what? You know in your heart you didn't deserve anything, but I'm giving it to you anyway. That shows you how to change. I don't deserve love, but he gives it to you. I don't deserve mercy, but he gives it to you. They were about to put you at the house. God stepped in, even Amen. in your mess. Right. So you can change. But guess what happened? You did You got sick. He healed you. And you forgot the one who healed you and you went back. Oh, there's some people who did that. There's some people that deathbed. God, I serve you all the days of my life. If you can heal me. And then when God healed them, guess what happened? You go back to the same old mess. Because you forgot the benefit of God. God does not judge you just right away. I don't know how long it takes, but his suffering is a long way, more longer than mine. So there's a lot of things he allowed you to keep continue, not because he's okay with it, because he's giving you the chance to change and say, I will not go that way no more. I choose you, Jesus. Number two. The three things to lead to repentance is number three is what? Forbearance. The Greek is anoche. A-N-O-C-H-E. The self-restraint of God. This is the reason that you, because God has self-restraint. Some of us don't have none. The minute something happens, you want to shoot, shoot up and act up. God is not that way. God is a God who's very self-restraint. He, he holds himself. He keeps himself. When everybody reacts, he don't react. He don't act up. He just, God. He, he's, he restrained his anger. He restrained his, 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 his ways. He restrained his certain things. And I know some of you may say, thank God he's God. But guess what? You can do the same thing too if you belong to God. Amen. If you belong to God, you can restrain yourself. The problem is you don't want to. You can hold your mouth. The problem is you don't want to. You don't choose to show the restraint of God in your life. But guess what? Even that God will judge. Because after a while, you ain't going to have no, no excuses to why you can't restrain if God is in you. Because when you look at this. If you show no restraint and the world sees you, they're going to say to you, what kind of God you serve it? Because you, as the worst sinner, will make them look bad and say, look at your ways. Look at the way you act. Look at the way you behave. Because as believers, we've got to have restraint in our thinking, in our action, and everything. There's certain things called mercy and love and caring. And sometimes we say it's too much. It can never be too much to care about people. It can never be too much. 
You can never have so much if you if you call by God, if you have God, you can never have too much to care for mankind. Because guess what the Bible says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth the earth should not perish and have what? Everlasting life. He tolerates sinners and permits them to live. Why? To be saved. Some of y'all may be asking for people to die and people to be wiped out of certain places and country. But guess what? No matter how hateful they are, they still belong to God. And he still wants them to be saved. He still wants them to call upon his name. The worst people in this planet, the worst thing they ever done, they still God wants to, for them to call his name. You may not think they're deserving of salvation. You may not think they deserve to be changed and, and be in the kingdom of God, but God is no respecter of person. My God have mercy. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Let's read that. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Talking about forbearance. Got it? Nine verse 30. Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testify against them by thy spirit and thy prophets. Yet they would not, yet they not give air. Therefore gavest thou them into the land of the people of the lands. See that? God keep talking, 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 talking talking and 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 talking but there's gonna come a day where he gonna give you over to your enemies Don't keep saying, I got mercy. When he keep talking, talking, don't do that. Don't go, don't, don't do this. And you say, I'm going to do it. I don't care what he says. Guess what he does? He turns yeah. and he hands you over to your enemies. He hands you over to the very thing that you wanted. Hands you over to the very thing that you're willing to. He give you over to your pride. He give you over.